body, but. <laughs> oh, good morning. <laughs> good morning. We're talking, We're talking about my hair and about whether or not I can achieve a sponsorship if I show what shampoo I'm using because Leah says my hair has a lot of great body today. So. Okay, well, your hair's always had body, but like the curls, like, are just I know, way just prettier. They're happening now. And so I'm just, it is, it has been great. And it was just, I just picked the shampoo up off the shelf and maybe it's that. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I also, like I said, I also got a haircut. So thank you. I do appreciate this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you today? I'm great, by the way, because I just got a hair compliment. So <laughs> I'm good. Um, there for a while, it was really iffy. Um, I thought I was going to have a coffee catastrophe, oh, but no. Melanie to the rescue. Um, oh. <laughs> Melanie is usually one of our our our, our regular uh, yeah. viewers on here. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Um, and she had given me a bunch of coffee samples. And I was able to make coffee with those because I was completely out of coffee. I don't know how that happened. Hi, oh, Andrea. Nice. Good morning, Andrea. Oh my so, gosh. Yes. But it is coffee samples to the rescue. It is tough to find yourself completely out of coffee. I feel like it's, I mean, it's definitely, okay, it's definitely an addiction in some form. And, um, <laughs> but I see myself getting to a certain level. Like I always try to make sure I get coffee like at the half bag level. Yeah. Um, and then also the pandemic taught me to keep a store, keep a stash of things. And so I actually also have like a bag tucked away for like just in case. There, there's a half bag of coffee in there that mm -hmm. it's, it's a flavored coffee and it's just the flavors just too yeah. much, you know, yeah. um, I normally like that flavor, but like that yeah. blend particularly just got a yeah. little too much butterscotch in it and it's just yeah. like cool. So but it, in the case of zero coffee and zero samples, you would at least not be without anything, but right. I'm glad you had the samples from Melanie. That was <laughs> but she saved my day. Good. You'll have to let her know that. So, I definitely will. Because she will, knowing you so well, she will also appreciate, she'll appreciate that she saved not just your day, but perhaps other people's days. <laughs> yes, it's it's very risky for those around me when I have not had my coffee. I'm trying to put it delicately. <laughs> I also owe Melanie a thank you. <laughs> I'm here, I'm comfy. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. That will be like the frozen screen, like the, the screen capture oh, yes. that gets used by, by Facebook to advertise this. Yes. But that expression on my face, yes. you know that's what will happen. Facebook just picks like what the thumbnail view is. It just like picks a time and um, randomly. It, yeah. And so you are, it's always very unflattering. And a lot of times Mary goes back and changes it, right? Because she has a good heart. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She's very, very kind to us. <laughs> but then she then she got she got out any inner frustrations by making that blooper video. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you know all those stupid expressions you make. I'm gonna make sure they're this is, <laughs> this is what I've been working with. So appreciate me. And we do. We do it. We, we really, on. really do. <laughs> any are you reading anything good right now? I am. Um I'm reading this is another advanced copy of something, so I will mention it again when it comes out, but it's on my brain. It's called, let me see here, it's called The Last House on Needless Street by mm -hmm. Patriana Ward. And it is solidly a like psychological suspense or psychological, psychological thriller type of thing. And it's hard to even really describe the plot necessarily, and especially because you don't exactly know where it's, I, I don't know exactly where it's gonna go. But essentially, it's narrated by three characters. One is a man who you're suspecting probably took this little girl years ago, and maybe other little girls. It's just that's the what we're thinking. That's who how yeah. he did. The other narrator is his cat, and then the third narrator is the sister of the little girl we suspect he may have took, who's like still trying to find her sister. Okay. But the narration is definitely pretty bizarre. He is super weird. 
one character is a cat. Well, you know, that's yes. weird. Yes, that, um, that is going to be very odd narration. Yes. And then, Why is my food bowl half empty? <laughs> well, yes. I, I can know. see the bottom. You need to refill it. Like, right. is that all cats think about? Sometimes I, 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 sometimes I wonder. And it actually, I feel like there is, like, true cat narration in there because there is, there is stuff, you know, about the way that the cat <laughs> behaves um, and perhaps why. Um, and then it also does that thing where it kind of jumps back and forth in time, but not in a clear way at all. Like what basically what the narrator see, or what the, the author seems to be doing is like, it's there, she'll describe, it's either like the mantle or the top of the piano or something. There's, um, there's some things on display and either like the photo of the parents is there or there's a dust, a, an empty spot where it's not, or the music box is broken or the music box is whole, but you don't know when these things are happening in time. So it's, it's a, a lot of confusion, but um, it's been very compelling, and I'm hoping if it if it sticks the landing in any way, it, I feel like it would be worth it recommending because it's yeah. like I don't know. I just I don't know what's gonna happen, and it's like you don't know who it, he supposedly has a daughter. Is it his daughter? Is it the person? Is it someone he took? Is it no one at all? You just yeah. don't you don't know what's gonna happen. So I would say if I'll bring it up again, but um, anyone who likes that type of really kind of out there it reminds me of um i'm thinking of ending things which was turned into the netflix charlie yeah. kaufman movie um but something that is just kind of really out there so that's what yeah. i'm gonna do and i keep thinking about it and i wish i didn't have to go to work this afternoon i could just finish the book and read it but <laughs> i also won't have a job monday morning so i'll go to work this afternoon. <laughs> uh, i guess we have to get paid <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what about you so what's what are I, you I am reading finally, because um, I've talked about it on here like four times now, um, Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it has the most untrustworthy narrator. Okay. Because um, she sees movies, like, like she will take like real life and like, somehow turn it into a movie so you never quite know oh. what's real and what's yeah. not like sometimes she'll she'll point it out but sometimes like she doesn't know like most of the time it seems yeah. like most of the time she knows but not always so yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering yeah. how much is real because yeah. yes so yeah really untrustworthy narrator and yeah. um yeah i'm just really i'm only about 15 percent of the way into it and <laughs> yeah. i'm listening to it so i know percentage is not but page right right um, right, right so i'm yeah. interested to see where it goes because yeah. it's yeah well it sounds like we're both reading like kind of uh like off the wall as far as like yeah like the stylistic way of, you know yeah whatever yeah. I don't know. you know what and I'm it's saying. very I'm nostalgic good. like it's it yeah. takes place in 1991 so like uh bands like they talk about band posters and you're like oh, i remember that poster everyone had that one and okay. um, cassette tapes and it's just like oh, yeah putting cassette tapes in the car radio so yeah, yeah. It's, it's very yeah. um pre-cell phone days and yeah it just that's great. I like that touch of nostalgia every yeah, once in a while. Definitely. I mean, if it is in the middle of a murder mystery, so. Right, and is this the one that is, um, there's a campus killer and okay. she has gotten a ride from somebody from the yeah. ride board. And do you remember the ride? Did you have ride boards when you were in college? We didn't have ride boards because we had all student, we had all student emails. So you could send an no all one student. liked email. <laughs> we um we, we we had the ride board and you would um you know put where you were going, you, yeah. whether or not you were well you were you were driving and looking for someone to take or you were a passenger looking mm -hmm. for a ride, willing to pay for gas. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. One of those things that changed drastically in ten years. Um, Definitely. Yes. Definitely. So yeah. yeah, it just um, and this is this predates my college days by about five years. So yeah. there were some things that that changed yeah. there, but um, but yeah, it's just it, it's bringing it all back. Yes. Well, I will say this is just a tangent, but my co my college years, like we had we had the all stu. Uh, email list and you know certainly things were much more advanced along yet 
the entire time I was in college, we still did paper registration where you had to go line up at the registrar's office and have your have your paper. And mm -hmm. I it's one of those things that I think they must have been doing in the name of tradition or something, because I'm certain so many schools had online registration and it didn't have yeah. to be like merging completely you know, into an online learning environment or doing your having your courses listed online, but just like a simple form. I know that they were capable of doing that, but we had like our our, our triplicate copy. Mm -hmm. We'd like go stand in line and turn it in. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I totally remember doing that. And like yeah. the first choice class would be full and you right. have to, yeah, yeah, finding what else yeah. to fit into that slot. It because... literally just depended on when you showed up in line. There wasn't even yeah. like a randomized, thing that they could do or but like, um, yeah but like certain people got priority in line like you got in line at certain times too mm -hmm. and right. um and some of it was also like certain a certain number of spots would be reserved for people who were in that major right yeah, yeah, not for sure. so, yeah. yeah i'm not sure that we had we had any type of line but i think it was just yes your major or your minor or whatever but then i think it was just like did you get there in time Anyway, that has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about today, but just that because like we were we were well past that. I know we were, but mm -hmm. for some reason I had to register on paper all four years. <laughs> right. And we had the we had the paper book. You know, mm -hmm. I went I picked my classes, it was from a paper catalog, and I just yes. know that it didn't have to be that way, which is fine. I've got them as now, I've got them as a Souvenir. Memento. <laughs> yeah. I, oh yeah, I remember those paper books picking the, the classes from. And I remember like my senior year of high school, like getting them in the mail, like look at our offerings. Yeah. And I think students today really miss out on all the, oh. the, 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 the mail. The mail. Yes. I got so much college mail. I was, I felt so popular, even though I'm aware right. that it's not to many, 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 many people. <laughs> I, you know, I even had like professors from one school calling me. I'm like, what is this? It was weird, but yeah. Um, and it wasn't just all available online. You got this book yeah. and you looked through and you looked at all the pictures and you were like, oh, can I imagine myself there? Yeah. And then you go and visit that school and you're like, oh my God, this is awful. This is nothing like those right, pictures. Yeah. I think all those pictures were taken. They were all taken right there. And the rest of the school is nothing like that. <laughs> You just got to feel for a place. But yeah, mm -hmm. why are we talking about college? Anyway, speaking, speaking of having to feel for things, I was going to ask what we had set to discuss today. I was going to maybe open with a question from what we were going to talk about, which is if you picture, if you think about like a very memorable scene or part of a book that you've read mm -hmm. before, just something that's like really sticks with you. The question is, and it's for everyone watching as well, what do you... What happens in your brain when you picture that scene? I see. Like, you see this, do you see the scene playing out in front of you? Mm -hmm. Yes. And for me, I see, I know this is probably gonna make many people very sad. I see the words on the page. I see, and for me, what come, I mean, I remember many scenes, but something that I draw on a lot is Harry Potter because I've read those books a lot of times. They were very important to me growing up. And so what I see is the texture of the paper, the words on the page, the stars on the page numbers at the bottom. And I can feel my childhood bedroom around me. I was with them in the summertime. I can feel the sun coming in. I have, I can smell things, but it's all my, my reality mm -hmm. <laughs> and not, not the scene in the book. Um, you know, the scene in the graveyard in Goblet of Fire is like sticks with me so much, but it sticks with me because it's the words I was reading and what was happening where I was at the time and how, yeah. So we have a link if Mary wants to post it, but we read this article um, that was just based on like a Reddit thread. This is not scientific, but about like what your inner narrator, what your inner inner narrator is when you read a book. And it was just yes. seemed really interesting to us. It, it is. And it's, it's, it's interesting because I, I listen to a lot of books, but, um, but yeah, like even even though like I'm driving down the road, I can still see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like it, my mind just pictures it, and I'm like, yeah. you know, I know what the person's apartment looks like. I know what the interior of this car looks like, and um, it might not be what it actually looks like, and it might right. not even be what the author describes it as. Okay, yeah, because I create my own visual. Sure. Um, and I some it gives me trouble sometimes, like when they take like a book that I've read mm -hmm. and they make it into like a movie or a TV show and the character then does not look anything like 
what I've been picturing in my head. Sure. And yeah. that, that for me is very jarring. Like, yeah. I love the Outlander books. We've talked about those a lot. And thank you, Mary, for posting that. Thank um, Mary. <laughs> and um, the, they made that into a, a TV series. And one of the characters does not work for, well, two of the characters really don't. Mm -hmm. For me, yeah. I have a really hard time with them because they do not look like how I imagine the characters looking. Um, the one is not nearly big enough. Like he's mm -hmm. not, like in my mind, he's very tall, very gangly, very like, mm -hmm. Yes, he's strong, but that's not like his yeah. kind of feature. It's his gangliness. And the, the, the actor they have is not like that. Yeah. Um, he's, it's not short, but, you know, because so many of the actors on the show are tall, he, his, his, it, he, it doesn't, he doesn't stand he doesn't, out. It doesn't stand out. Yeah. So it just, it doesn't work for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I get a very distinct visual of what is happening. Well, when you, as you explain that, that also, I think, explains why I never have trouble with movie adaptations of things, because for me, they're completely different. Like, the experience of watching a movie is absolutely nothing like the experience of reading a book. And for me, it's like, just, a, it's a, it's the same thing. They've taken inspiration and made something completely different, which I usually think is cool. And it just, it doesn't impact that original book at all, because that book was a reading experience. And, like, the experience mm -hmm. of reading and reading the words and sitting with the book in my hand and just absorbing the way I, there wasn't something quite mentioned like this in the inner narrator thing, but it's, I feel like the words sort of like create like an atmosphere, you know, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I'm responding to. But um, to get really silly about it, it's almost like the words are like casting a spell, but I'm not visualizing anything. It's just like the experience of reading them. Yeah. Um, and so when I see a movie, not only have I never crafted my own character image in my head that the movie is then conflicting with, it just feels completely different because the experience is totally different and I, I don't mind it, you know? Yeah, for me, they're not, it's it's not that different. Like, yeah, it, it, it does more for like the overall atmosphere and like what's going on around sure. and like the, what the area like of the world looks like. Right. Um, because... I'm more focused on yeah. like, the characters. It sounds characters like and like mm -hmm. this room and where where it's happening. Yeah. But yeah, I totally um, I see what's happening. Like mm -hmm. it, it's just it's very strange to me. And I, yeah. um, Mary says that she's having a problem with the sweet tooth adaptation because they took a very odd looking kid and cast a child model <laughs> of some sort. The whole adaptation apparently has a major gloss that is not what I ever wanted from Sweet Tooth. So what? isn't the I'm sorry to interrupt real quickly, but Mary, isn't the child in Sweet Tooth, isn't it like half animal or something? You can yes. clarify. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And in the movie, does it look that way? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I wonder though, because Mary reads graphic novels, she she doesn't have to create the 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 image because the image is already there for her i wonder right. that's i wonder true. how much i wonder and how I will, it works with graphic novels because i'm not yeah. a graphic novel reader i guess i don't need to be a graphic novel reader because i see it play out anyway and i will tell you i read graphic novels and i have to remind myself to look at the pictures i tend to go just text to text to text <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, yeah. And then I got to go back. And like, if I miss something that's happened, I have to like see what the characters are doing. And then I, yeah, anyway, but you're right. And, and that's also though, when you're making an adaptation of a graphic novel, I mean, you have to then intentionally make it different because they've already shown you very clearly what it looks like. So you're making a really intentional departure, I would think. So I can see why that definitely bothers Mary. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if on the list of the, in, internal or I'm sorry yeah the internal narrator list then were you which one did you think you fit best with did you write that down at all um the movie maker movie um, maker okay yes nice. so you see all scenes and actions and characters as a movie yes nice. um I sometimes like the nearsighted narrator yeah. where I'm just more focused on like 
just this portion, not like everything, everything around. around it. Yeah. But more often than not, I'm seeing everything. Um, yeah. So, but because, and so were you, what were you? Um, I would call myself the first one, which is the word, the word nerd, wholly focused <laughs> on words on the page. Don't imagine scenes or characters. They also pointed out um, that books with like a fantastical landscape do not appeal to this type of reader, which is very, very, very much me. I don't, I don't like books with a lot of landscape, <clears throat> especially fantastical landscape, landscape description that is grounded in real life. I'm fine with, but like a very good example is my attempt to read the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm -hmm. And I just, there's so much there and none of it, a lot of it, is, it just asks a lot of me. And, um, <laughs> and because I don't enjoy crafting, that in my brain, I don't, I don't picture the characters. I don't hear the characters. I don't picture what their houses look like. I don't picture where they are. I, I'm in it for the language. I've always been in it for the language and the way that that like feels and sounds. And I'm still immersed in it. I just am, like I said, You're it's like immersed it's a, in the in the world. Spell. In it's the a text. spell. Yeah, and they have to, and when they do it in the way that really appeals to me, I am like really sucked in, but without having to work so hard <laughs> to try to imagine something. Um, and like some of the books that I really like and that have really pulled me in, they tend to be long, but are Possession by A.S. Byatt and The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. And they're just books where there's, there's a lot of words in those books, <laughs> but they're used to like build something for yeah. me because Girl, I can't do it. <laughs> and I think sometimes books that are super descriptive, mm -hmm. I sometimes have a little trouble with because I'm like, they'll, they'll get to a part where they describe something and it's jarring for me because mm -hmm. I've already created this other image that that doesn't fit with. Yeah, right. And that sounds really like, I don't know, just like a lot of cognitive dissonance there. Some of the other <laughs> things in the article for people who read or don't, who decide to read the article or don't, um, is, be, is what they call the main character, which is, it's a very strong inner narrator that is you the whole time. So it's exactly how you would say things, exactly how you would express things and the feelings and emotions and stuff. And um, the scenes aren't so much the focus, but it is a, it's a lot about you. Um, and so I would think that like emotional stories, character driven stories would probably be important to someone with that narration. And then, um, we can go, I mean, if we want to take turns going through them, but the other one that was interesting to me and insane to me, no offense to anybody, is the voice actor who reads in different voices and assigns different voices to characters, like the amount of energy. And if that's just your natural thing, like, man, go you, I can't, I could not. Yeah. Them. <laughs> that, that one to me was just like, I listen to them and I love when, yeah. when, when they do different voices for the yeah. characters, but even though like I'm seeing different characters, the if if there's a voice, it's always my voice because, yeah. and it's how I would say things. Yeah. So it's, but, um, and uh, I hate when, um, like if I'm reading something and in, cause in my head, I also am like, I'm saying it how the character would say it. Yeah. And I hate when like, I like stress the wrong part of the sentence because like, it's your first time reading it. You don't know. And, no and like, I, I have to go back and reread that sentence and put the stress you know? where it really would be. I okay. I have to read You're it correctly. Yes. Like saying these things in your head. Yes. And, and that is part of what this article points out. Is like, do you, they give you like a sample sentence. It's like, read this. Do you hear anything? Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like that that is a big a big difference and that people as readers you don't i think you just get used to how you do it and you can't envision that someone else i mean you don't spend any time thinking about it anyway that someone else might read this and literally hear it or not hear it at all and that's wild i um, hear it I, and see it yeah. and it's just it's it's a very all senses involved <laughs> except that's that, right. i guess yes <laughs> i will like, even even like if they describe a smell, you know, I'm like, I'm there, I'm there with it, but. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, and I will point out, they say in the word nerd one, they also say that those people in real life tend to not have an inner monologue, and that is not true for me at all. I have a very intense and ongoing inner monologue, but mm -hmm. the, oh, I think that's why. Mine doesn't always stay inner. 
I, I, I do a lot of out loud models. Yes, I do as well. Talking to myself and even yes. conversations. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I think that that's part of why, though, I like reading is because that inner monologue goes away and I'm just, re just reading the book. And I don't even have to hear myself as the narrator. I hear nothing. I'm just reading the book. And that that is a beautiful and peaceful thing. The neutral voice one was... Um, Odd to me. It's like so. Okay, maybe you hear a voice, but it doesn't sound like you. It's not. Are you a robot? What are I'm, you? I'm like, what? There's like no emotion behind it. There's no emphasis. Right. There's like when someone's angry, it's just oh, oh no. I am angry. Please stop. I mean, like right. Why? Like that doesn't work for me. <laughs> yes. If you have, if you feel you have a neutral voice inner narrator, please explain it to us. Um, because I did, I did also have like a difficult time with that one too. It almost seems like it would be easier to come up with voices for characters than to keep a, new, a neutral right. in their voice. Like I might rather try to come up with, vo with voices than, yeah, yeah, I don't know. And it's one of those like, when something exciting is happening, like I'm all, like on the edge of my seat, like how do you maintain a neutral voice? Like when you're, True. when you're putting that much emotion and yeah, and I was gonna ask, we had all kinds of fun stuff to talk about, but I was gonna ask about, um, instead I talked about college college admissions, so good. you're welcome everybody. Um, <laughs> but one of the things we were gonna talk about um, was you said when you get excited and you're on the edge of your seat and we were discussing like, do you, are you the type of person who's like, uh, I'm guessing the answer is yes, who's like audibly involved in the books that they're reading like do you like laugh cry yell gasp out loud yes in public yes i do that yeah um, that, i, I, I didn't know how to like have an entire waiting room look at me like when i yeah. just like, <gasps> like I and i wonder if that has <laughs> i wonder if that has something to do with like your type of inner narrator and how you picture the book as well because i don't i don't do that like i don't mm -hmm really react in any way to what I'm reading, even though like emotionally and internally I'm reacting. Um, I don't, I used to, when I was little, I like teenager, young, young teenager, I used to laugh a lot when I read, when I would read like funny things, but like, I don't, but I, I laughed reading Shit Actually by Lindy West. I laughed out loud until I cried during that book. But beyond that, um, I don't react so much and I don't have the issue you do of, doing that in public because I cannot concentrate enough to read in public. I bring books with me everywhere. I, now that I have my Kindle, I bring it anywhere I go, doctor's office, waiting room. But unless it is completely silent in there, I can't read. I can't read. Oh, that other people don't bother me. I, 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 I read to block out the other noise because like my inner mo movie just completely. That's great. And yes. that's, that's very convenient because I know some people like they can read while like their spouse is watching television or whatever, I just, I'm very high maintenance. I just, I, I gotta, gotta be able to concentrate on those words on the page. And if the like office manager at the doctor's office is talking behind the counter on the phone, I can, I can I hear that overrides what I'm reading, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm able to block most of that out. Sometimes um, TV will distract me depending on what it is. Certain things yeah. I can, I can, I can ignore, but sometimes TV, will distract me and I won't, yeah. I will have trouble be reading in a room where the TV's playing. But it just yeah. depends on how engrossed I am in the book. That's awesome. I am envious, envious of that. I'm not envious I, of you staying up late though. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I get, I get like stuck in a book and I just, I can't put it down and I have to, like I have to finish it. I have to find out what happens or I mm -hmm. need that happy ending or the terrible ending or whatever it happens to be, you know, I just right. I can't put the book down. So yeah. luckily I've gotten old and can't stay awake. Um, when, <laughs> when I was younger, I used to do a lot more of that staying up way too late. Yeah. My coworker actually just yesterday, the day before told me she woke up um, in the middle of the night, like a really unfortunate hour, like two thirty, you know, like the 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 bad the bad time, and I um, couldn't go back to sleep. So she decided to start reading her book, and then she's like, and I just got too sucked into it, and I kept saying I should put it down, but then I was like, but I just need to know what happens next. And so she said that she was, 
she could have gone to sleep earlier. Like she had made herself, you know, she could have tried again. Mm -hmm. She was up to like five o'clock because she just needed to see how the, she just needed to make it through the book. So she would relate to that for sure. Yes. Yes. I, I, I have done that many times. Um, I, a couple years ago had stayed up all night reading and, um, <clears throat> had posted that I'd gotten very little sleep because I'd stayed up to, to finish my book. And person I knew in high school posted, glad to see nothing has changed. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so, really yeah. cute. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I am definitely a bookworm. Yeah. Uh, uh, as we say here in, in, in America. Do, do you know what they call it in um, Italy? No, and we talked about this yesterday, and I didn't look a single one of these things up because I figured you would, and you would tell me. <laughs> yes. In Italy, um, they call it a library mouse. Oh, I love that. that. That's so much cuter. That's so much cuter than the bookworm. Much cuter than the Turkish book maggot. <laughs> Am I frozen? I think I might be frozen. No. Oh, I, you're I not frozen for me. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> You yeah. had frozen, so I kind of oh, figured no, it was okay. me who was actually frozen. Okay, All right, sorry. Um, in Chinese, it's a book full. So I like F -O -O -L. book full. Book full. Um, Spanish, it's a library rat, which I just, I know some people like rats. I'm Library mouse is objectively rat. cuter than library rat. Right. Um, in Norwegian, it's a reading horse. <laughs> In Malay, a book caterpillar. Um, in Korean, you suffer from book madness. <laughs> that might be what I have, actually. <laughs> um, in Finnish, it's a chapter maggot, not just a book maggot. Um, <laughs> in Greek, you are a book eater. In uh. Vietnamese, you are a book weevil. And apparently no one can get away from the idea of you're the little nasty creature that chews through the pages of a book. We've never, right. except for yes. maybe the horse people, have never- uh, The horse people and um, the the ink drinker Ooh. is is a French, French phrase. To me that just although, seems very like goth. Like- Although here, I think that's based on a book. I think there's a French book about an ink drinker. I, I, I don't know exactly because this lists the French term as library rat. Um, so I'm not exactly okay. sure. Yeah, so. I, it's just a very like uh, dramatic and goth type of yes. version of the worm. <laughs> Terry says that rats are better than mice, which as pets, I agree. But if someone's gonna call me something, I'd rather them call me a mouse than a rat. <laughs> There's just yeah. too many connotations to rat. <laughs> Rats get a bad rap, you know. I think I had a pet rat. <laughs> you did. Rats are so cute. Although she was he he was lovely and uh, I loved him very much and he was a great pet. But um, he was my biology rat that then I got to take home. Um, <laughs> Carrie also had pet rats, so yeah, yeah so cute. But again. I think I'd rather be called a library mouse. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I like the library mouse. I think um, in the Japanese, you're a book bug, just. <laughs> and see, that's not, maybe because it's not as specific and disturbing as like a maggot. I feel like book bug is also okay. <laughs> yes, maggot I think is, is probably the, the worst. And there are several, um, countries that, that use maggot, Tur Turkey, um, Albania. Well, and unfortunately, and maybe the word they're using for maggot isn't as disturbing. May maybe. Um, Although maggots themselves are very. I mean, they're only associated with like. Death and that, yeah. yeah. Although they can be very helpful in medical situations, like when someone has a, 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 an infected limb or something, like they will put maggots in them and they will only eat the dead stuff and it helps with the healing. So maggots can be very beneficial. So I'm not dissing the maggot cure, just 
Let's transition. I know we're going to end it there. <laughs> Allison's like, no more maggots. We can't. I can't. So one thing um, we were going to talk about too, this will like lift us up, is like your reading environment. Do you, or possibly an ideal reading environment if you feel like you don't have your ideal reading environment. Or like if your ideal reading environment is something you may never have, but you like to dream about like reading in a tree house or something. Um, reading <laughs> Reading among, I don't know, whatever. Do you have an ideal reading environment? I, I don't actually have an ideal reading environment. Um, in fact, I kind of hate my environment. But if 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 I had my ideal reading environment, there would be a big window, mm -hmm. a large oversized chair for me to to curl up in or throw mm -hmm. my legs over mm -hmm. or twist sideways in mm -hmm. or and their footstool because you know sometimes yeah. you want to stretch out because like oh, yeah. you I I need like 17,000 different positions while I read I just kind of slide from one to the uh -huh. next without ever putting the book down yeah um, I want to be surrounded by books so bookshelves um a very thick soft beautiful rug beneath my feet that's very soft that I can mm -hmm. rub my feet on mm -hmm. um, a furry animal on my lap mm -hmm. um, a table by my side for my both hot and cold beverages mm -hmm. because I like variety yes and um, yes maybe even a fireplace yeah. for, for cold days when it's snowing outside my window a fireplace to keep me warm that's I want my very own library yeah. with a comfy chair that's yes. Well, they but, make these chairs that are designed for like corners. So it's just like this giant square, like really, like, I feel like that, that is, if you look it up, like corner sofa or something, okay. it's not a sofa. It's just, it's a big gigantic chair. That's like, you can just picture your whole corner becomes that chair. Cause I was looking at those because I was developing my own reading area. I think for me, one of the most important parts of an ideal reading place, at least for daytime, is natural light. Like, I really want it to be a light-filled space. So I have a place I read during the summer-ish months um, where there does get to be enough light. And I am a chair person as well. I want, like, a big chair with an ottoman. And so I started developing a second reading nook area for myself for the winter months where there's more light in that room. And I do have, and so I got a lamp that I can turn the light on. So when it does start to get dark, I can look out a window. I have the ottoman, the big chair. The chair itself is pretty ugly, but I can, it has a lot of space in it. So fine. I could not afford a big corner chair at this time, but I could afford, afford a used 80s ugly chair. So I did that. It's more comfort than the appearance. I don't. Yeah. Yes, it is. And like you said, I've got the, I've got a shelf next to me. So I, and I have two coasters. I put two coasters right there, one for the, the cold drink and one for the hot drink. And I think yes. the only thing, yes. And so, and then for summer months, it's great too, because there is, in both of my reading areas, there's a vent right next to it. So I always have cold air when the air, is, when the air conditioning is on and warm air when it's not. And then um, the only thing I'm missing, I think what would make my reading experience ideal, the fantasy, is that I could drink as much coffee as I wanted without feeling like I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> Or getting up from the chair. Or getting up from the chair without making it feel like my heart's going to explode. I would love to just be, or not be able to sleep at night. Because just there's something about having that book and that warm warm and cold beverage and just how cozy all of that feels. But at some point in the day, I have to stop drinking coffee. And I think that my fantasy would just be that I would never have to stop. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Never have yeah, to stop. Very similar ideal reading, very similar ideal reading scenarios, I think. Yeah. I know like for some people like my sister a lot of times I notice she will get like little um snacks, like a little bowl of nuts that she can like, you know, mm -hmm. pick at or little squares yeah. of cheese that she can pick at yeah. as she breathes. So like yeah, some people some people need snacks. Or, like an indulge like a more like it makes it feel more even more like indulgent or something. Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. that's it. I do not I d I don't I don't need the snacks, although mm -hmm. If, if they're there, I would partake, pro yeah. probably. But yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and do, you, do you read like when you eat your meals? Um, It depends. Um, well, 
I used to live farther away from the library and I didn't have time to like run home at lunch. So I would de very definitely eat during my meals then. Um, yeah. When I was like in the staff room at work. Um, yeah. I now like I run home and usually my mother's here and yeah, um, you know, so it's just, um, yeah, it's not the same, like solid same. time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but I do have like accessories for myself that I bought when I was reading at a yeah. table while eating. Like I've got my uh, little book holder. It yeah. will like hold the pages of the book open and then up at an angle. So yeah. you can, um, uh, yeah. you know, read it without, yeah. you know, looking down at the table because that's not a very yeah. healthy position in which to eat, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you can look up a little bit. Um, so I got myself one of these that hold my book, <laughs> and it's nice. it holds nice and flat, so yes. I can take it with me. Um, <laughs> I also have one of these thumb readers. Um, I have one of those too. So that, like, if you're holding the book with the one hand and eating with the other, mm -hmm. this will hold the pages. These hold the pages open, yeah. so that um, you only need one hand to hold the book. And read. Nice. <laughs> um, or before I got the one that held it up, I was using this. It's, mm -hmm. it's a book weight to hold mm -hmm. the pages open, and um, you can slide it up and down the page. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, so it's not blocking the words that you need to read, but it right. holds, holds the book open for you so it doesn't close. That's very classy. Yeah, we have some of those lots of tools yeah. for reading. That's very classy because we also have one of those in tech services, but it is just a stapler. And they just, <laughs> this is a not a stapler, but we just hold the stapler up and then we put it down at the top of the book and then down at the bottom of the book. <laughs> um, they made so much for that, Allison. Really cute. And I actually do have one of those book stands. Um, Tara gave it to me as a gift. And um, so I should try that. I've been reading, I do read at lunchtime. I usually take a walk, but I often read at lunchtime as well. And I've been reading on my Kindle because I don't have to use the stapler. I can just lay it there and I can just tap the pages. Um, but now that you mentioned using the book, I wonder if I could put my Kindle up on the Yes, I, I, you can, cause you can make it like a very small yeah. opening. So it's, I, I did use this with my nice. finger and then you just have to reach up and swipe the page. Yeah. <laughs> and it's ready That's to turn great. Page. So yes, it, it holds it up at that angle. So you're not looking down at the table flat to read. Yeah. yeah. I got tired of like trying to balance my book on something. I just yeah. went ahead and spent the $10 and got, got the book holder. <laughs> So I didn't have to do that. Um, Carrie says, says, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, Carrie says that the thumb thing is also good for tired, ouchy hands. And I imagine especially good if there's tired, ouchy hands and a mass market paperback because mass market paperbacks are so like tightly bound. Yes, yeah. And so hard to yeah. crack open. And these I've seen like very fancy, like wooden ones that are mm -hmm. very, very pretty. And then there are like plastic ones that are just like super yeah. easy. And they come in all different styles. And That's I've awesome. often thought that some of those really beautiful like cookbook holders that they yeah. have <laughs> yeah. would be really pretty instead of like something like this. But this is so convenient because it's, like I said, it folds flat. You can take it with you. I actually have a bag that I keep all of this stuff in. It's like yeah. in my work bag. So it. Oh my God. <laughs> it's your reading bag. Your reading equipment. Yes. <laughs> oh. Another thing that's always in that bag is a couple of bookmarks, like honest to God bookmarks. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you do not dog ear books. That is just awful. And even though, like, I own probably dozens of beautiful bookmarks. Mm -hmm. I use scraps of paper or yeah, would, yeah. clean tissues or yeah. something small and flat that will fit in the book yeah. because I never can find a bookmark. Yeah, that's the same way here. I was going to say, yeah, maybe you don't dog your pages, but you do use like just clean garbage. That's what I use to mark the pages in my books. Like the tag that I cut off of the new shirt that I'm wearing or whatever, or just like, why can I find that? But I can't find a bookmark, a handcrafted gift bookmark. Right, because I own dozens, dozens. Mm -hmm. Can never find them. And honestly, the reason why I feel like dog earring pages, like I know you don't want to, especially a library, library book, we should not be doing that too. 
But like, I've never got the documenting pages because you're only going to be marking that page like one time and then you're going to be on a different page that's always going to be turned down. It's just going to like add to the confusion of what, what page you're in. I know it's always going to be the farthest along page, but I don't know. I would rather stick something in the book that I can then move. Right. And what drives me crazy is when someone returns a library book that's got like 80 pages dog-eared and they're still dog-eared so you have to go through and unfold, unfold each them. one of those corners drives me insane so i guess the moral is if you're gonna dog ear at least undog ear if you're gonna dog ear it's your book only do it to your books <laughs> yes yes so saith leah so saith leah the word is final the word has been passed down is there anything else we definitely um, went way over. Surprise. I I, I want to know, are you a rereader? I have to say, clearly, I I do reread. I reread The Great Gatsby, and I've reread Harry Potter a lot of times. But beyond that, I do not enjoy rereading in the way that, for example, my aunt, um, she has books that she regularly she, she, she is a rereader and like what I think is probably the best sense. She's like, oh, it's time for me to read this book again. I haven't read it, you know, in a few years. And because reading that book makes her feel a certain way. So that's like, you know, she wants to feel that way again. So she reads that book, which I think makes perfect sense. But for me, for whatever reason, I can't seem to do that. What happens is I have to try to find another book to make me feel the way that that book felt because I can't, I, I'm either like, I just can't focus on reading it again. So for example, Possession by A.S. Byatt, one of my favorite books ever, but I don't know that I'll ever read it again. I just have to find more books by A.S. Buy It and hope that there's, I like them as well as I like that one. I am definitely a rereader. Um, mm -hmm. And some of it is like comfort. Like I know what's going to happen. I know what's coming. Um, but I forget so much that yeah. it's almost like reading a book again if I wait yeah. long enough. Um, right. but, but, but I still, I still know how it's going to end. And that gives me comfort. Um, <laughs> and you, know, um, you don't even remember the specifics, you know, how you felt about it. So yes, that's me. Yeah. I really, I really do not remember specifics a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Like I, there will be like certain scenes or certain moments that I can still vividly see, but overall I remember how it made me feel Yeah, not every little thing that happened along the way. Yeah. Which is weird because I'm so visual when I read, but it's like, I've only got so much tape and the VHS tape just keeps, keeps <laughs> getting re-recorded over. Right, um, right. So, right. Um, yes. But I, I I remember how books made me feel, but I'm, I'm a rereader. Like there are certain books, like, I don't know, every 10 years or so, I want to reread like, the the Earth Children series by Jean M. All, the Plan of the Cave Bears, the first one. Like mm -hmm. every 10 years, I want to reread those. And then um, like when there's a series, mm -hmm. uh, I forget what happened previously because <laughs> that tape got right. recorded yeah. over. So in order to like jump back into the the next book, yeah. with lots of series, I will just wait till all of them are out and then read them. But like yeah. the Outlander series, the ninth book is coming out. Um, does that mean you have sure. to reread the whole thing? I have to reread the whole thing. Um, I could maybe skip book one and two. I've read those two enough now that yeah. I feel like I, I, those those are very solidly there. I know what happens. Yeah. Um, but I will probably re start with book one yeah. and read all of them again because, um, like, for me, books one, two, three, and four are like their own separate books. Like, I they're very clearly those stories for me are distinguished. Mm -hmm. But then I, I had before, um, right before book eight came out, read, reread. Re so I went like from book, I, I started at book one, but like five, six, seven, and eight now are all like this muddled mess in my brain. Yeah. I don't know what happened when, because I read mm -hmm. them one right after the other. So the story is kind of, yeah. 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 So yeah, I'm gonna have to start over again and reread the whole series before book nine comes out in November, so that I know what in what is going on. So you should probably get started soon. Yes. Because that's how the book will be very enjoyable for you because you do love that series and it okay. will be a fun. It'll be a fun task. Yes. So yeah, I enjoy rereading and like yeah. 
Pride and Prejudice is one of those books that every few years I'm like, yeah, it's time. I need to reread that now. So yeah, yeah. that is a really good book. And I'm going to, I'm thinking about maybe trying to spread my wings with rereading because I'm trying to, I mean, really since the pandemic and since doing this show for like a variety of, like a variety of things changed for me, including getting like the Kindle, just things in my reading life changed. And um, so I'm kind of getting reading more outside of my box and appreciating books for other reasons, even if they're not the book that I would, you know, mm -hmm. all my favorite for my favorite reasons, whatever. Um, and so I was thinking about maybe trying to, approach the rereading thing maybe by um, listening to audio versions of things that I have read because then I don't feel like I'm spending my sitting down time reading, rereading something I've already read and I'll maybe absorb it in a different way than I did reading it the first time around. So I, I'll get back to you on that if that's something, but I was kind of thinking about, um, yeah, just listening to things I've read before. I've done that. I, there was, um, the feed series. Um, mm -hmm. I remember you talking about yeah. News Flash series. The first one is feed. Sorry, I always do that by Mira Grant. I had read those and then I love them so much. Um, like I listen to them and it's one of those that I've listened to now a couple of times after having yeah. read them. And it's just, and Harry Potter, I had read mm -hmm. all of the Harry Potter books. I've never listened to them. Yeah. And then like last summer, I was like, oh, right. I'm going to listen to these. So yeah. I listened to them and it was, it is, it's a much different experience listening to them than it is reading them, so. Yeah, and okay. I may, I'm, I'm toying with almost kind of the reverse. It's, this isn't a reread, but you know, I've listened to several Tana French books and I've liked mm -hmm. them. Um, and at the Twig bookstore, um, I found a Tana French book that I hadn't read for like 50 cents or whatever. And so I bought that, but I've never physically read one of her books, I've only ever listened to it. And I just wonder, yeah. what will that be like? <laughs> Will you get the Irish accent right, though? No. <laughs> In your head? No. See, that's, see, for me, certain books, I need to listen to them because I I will never get the accent right. I want to I wanna hear someone else do it. Correctly. Honestly, I know we're approaching an hour now. I'm so sorry. All our viewers have left. It's fine. I didn't but, realize you were still going. I mean, oh, we're that, going. We're going. Um, but... That was one of the disappointments of that most recent um, Tana French book I read, In the Woods, because he's like a posh, he went to boarding school, and so he doesn't have an Irish accent. He has like yeah. a posh British accent, mm -hmm. and I was deeply disappointed. Sorry. I was that, Dublin, that Dublin sound. The next books in that series are, they have the Irish okay. accent. Sorry. So, few. <laughs> We probably should wrap it up. We've been going for a while. I didn't realize I how, how late it had gotten. Yeah. So we <laughs> probably should go. But <laughs> thank you for being here with us today. We were excited to talk about these things. Um, it's just fun to talk about what it's like to be a reader. So yes. it's um, interesting to hear how other people experience yes. reading because everyone experiences it differently. It does. Yeah. It, it is interesting to hear that because everyone does. So also feel free if you're watching this later to leave a note in the comments about how you experience reading. Um, because it's just, yeah, it's really fun to think about how someone can read the same book as you, but experience in a completely different way. Right. <laughs> it was an interesting chat, the library says. Indeed it was. Thanks for still being here, even to our coworker, the remaining person yes, left. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya.